Hi. So I guess the commentary was actually from the original book of chapter 4, but what I put on the blog is the extended version, which I guess I forgot that I combined chapter 4 and chapter 5 together in the extended version forming a longer chapter 4. So I'm going to do a comment uh, now on the extended version, which is the other half part of the chapter 4, and that more um, specifically, it starts with the scene of the funeral in the courtyard of our apartment and moves on to the end. Um, I highly, highly dislike that part in the book. Um, I've had a very melancholic tendency um, in the past and uh, I think I'm cured of that because I really, really don't like um, looking at life that way. I used to um, almost feed off of people's pain um, and make it my own and that was um, I guess an example of one um, of somebody else's um, pain and suffering that somehow I internalized it and made it my own as if um, it was my own suffering. I really do, did like um, Miss uh, Maria, but we are not really close friends because she was older, I was younger, but it was more the familiarity of her face, seeing her every day, and as a young person realizing that you can see one person one day and be gone, um, that per the same person be gone the next day, I think it kind of brings a little bit of, um, it starts the question of we can be here and then we are gone, we can be gone too, so it's, it's more of a deeper um, inner, uh, understanding about life and um, how precious it is. However, back then I had a very melancholic look at uh, pain. I think because I've experienced so much, I really didn't really I didn't know how to process it any other way except that way. And happiness was so seldom that. I don't think it was enough of a good balance and I just end up grasping and holding on to people's pain because I've noticed even later on over the years anybody that was going through pain and I knew about it it's almost I actually lived it myself as if I myself went through that pain and I really had to work at that to learn to detach myself because um, it was producing issues within myself health-wise, but it was producing issues within my relationship with um, people around me later on, um, and at the time, I believe, too, when if you end up just getting, getting stuck all the time at the sadness of life, you forget to live life. And at that point, I think I had a tendency to do that. And for, for, for a period of time of my life, I did, you know, starting in, in the teenage years of my life. And it continued um, for quite a bit. I no longer think like that. I look back at that scene and I literally do not want to read uh, through. I don't want to deal with it. I feel like, oh, geez, this, is, this feels like such a gloomy um, scene, I would much rather just eliminate it 100%. However, at the time, that was the truth about who I was and how I was processing the parts of life, death, and where do I stand, and that and my beliefs about both sides and pain, I guess, and just that was my way of processing. Then later on you can see that the TV comes on and the news is announcing the, um, that President, at the time, Nicolae Ceausescu, um, or the way people in America say Nicol Nicolae Ceausescu, ran and because uh, it, it was in that turmoil time of um, the beginning of turmoil times 
of the revolution of 1989 back in Eastern European bloc. It did start in Poland and it slowly moved out through other countries, Romania being one of those countries, me being Romanian in the countries, in the country of Romania, starting to experience a little bit of what in, of, of the reality, I guess, of the, um, a, a revolution happening within the country on a political basis and what does that mean um, for a regular citizen, you know, daily, day-to-day -day citizen. Um, and of course that news, you know, brought both um, fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, anxiety of the fact of no one knew what was, ha what was going to happen next or what did that mean, the change, the political change, what did that mean for everyday citizen um, as well as hope, especially the young people because of the possibilities that this could bring to the country and to each individual person's future. So yes, it was quite a, you know, quite a, I guess an important time of, of life and history and I had the privilege to live through it and to see and feel the emotions of uh, such a dramatic change, the fall of communism itself and how that operated. Of course, there's a lot of under, you know, behind the scenes on a political level, the big guys, you know, with the um, leadership uh, details that I don't know about it. And of course, there's a lot of rumors. There's a lot, a lot of insinuating uh, kind of scenarios. And those are uh, uh, pieces of information that I think everybody needs to go and try to find the truth before um, grasping on and believing everything that kind of flies from mouth to mouth. I think that's smart in any circumstance. So I think I finished that. We were going to move on to chapter five. Have a great day. We'll see you at chapter five. Bye.